Hey guys, welcome to D3 Media. Uh, I'm joined by Ben and Brandon, and today we're going to be talking about does George Lucas get too much credit for the original Star Wars and Star Wars in general? And we'll probably also uh, delve off into talking about the new uh, news that Boba Fett's going to be back in season two of The Mandalorian, and maybe some other stuff that's happening with uh, Star Wars right now, because why not? Oh, I like the background. Wow, you chose the worst Star there Wars you go. movie. As there your background, you Ben. Wow. Best. I'm just kidding. No, that was all. Right. I think you meant best, right? Hmm. I think that that was the only. That was one of the few scenes out of Attack of the Clones that I really actually that I really enjoyed. I think that's one of the only scenes everyone enjoyed from Attack yeah. of the Clones. <laughs> like there was that one, and then there was the uh, Yoda kicking ass. So. Yeah, but then that same. There's also I think Attack of Clones has that awkward scene where uh, they're fighting and they close up. They do a close up on their faces, and you see the, like the lightsabers spinning in front of them for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I can see what you're going for there, George, and uh, you, you did not pull it off. The yeah, but anyways, uh, I want to make the disclaimer right now. We're trying. We're gonna try not to hate on George. Um, I I think that for one, I think for a long time he did get too much hate because everybody was saying that he ruined their childhood and ruined their lives. And then now that Disney has star Wars, everybody acts like they never said that. Yeah. There's some stuff I want to say about that for sure. How Star Star Wars fans are just the worst. Yeah. Quite literally the bottom pit of fandom. (laughs) But uh, I think it's also safe to say we all love the movies still. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. still I, love Star Wars. I got my Admiral Thrawn figure right here. I've got my can't really see it, but you know, I got my tattoo. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's my. Oh, sick. Uh, yeah, and I plan on getting more because, as you know, you should be able to critique what you love. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, speaking of Admiral Thrawn, you know, he should have been the main bad guy of the of the uh, sequel trilogy. Disney, you really really just screwed it on that one <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine benedict cumberbatch playing admiral thrawn instead be of having snow or something you know i didn't read the books but i read their um reinterpretation of him in the comics yeah and uh it was interesting i i would like to see what he'd be like in the films but you know i like his empire wasted storylines that they could have used yeah oh yeah so they to... they went with Whatever that was. <laughs> well, uh, that's why we're, I, my friend Joseph was supposed to be here, and he's actually a huge fanboy of the uh, new trilogy, except for Rise of Skywalker. But he actually loves Last Jedi and everything. But you know, he just decided not to show up. So Joseph, if you're listening to this, you're dead to us. You are a. <laughs> I've never met this person, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are. Uh, you're part of the Rebel Alliance, and you're a traitor. So. Yeah. I uh, guess let's just get on with the first thing that we're here to talk about. Do you guys think George Lucas gets too much credit for Star Wars? I think yes, in the good and the bad. Like, he gets too much yeah. credit for um, what's good about it and also the credit about what's bad about it. I I was going to say yes and no. I think he gets... I'm going to agree with him and say that, you know, yeah, he does get too much credit for all the good, but also he is like number one enemy when it comes to anything bad about Star Wars. Literally, everyone blames him about they. They go as far as mocking him. Yeah. Oh yeah, which you know comes with the territory of working in media. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, it's people use him as the scapegoat. I think that's what it is when yeah. they want have something bad to say, even if it's about the new trilogies or, you know, the prequels or the original trilogy, there's always something about him. They just, you know, they always want to pick at him with, with something. Well, he's definitely the, the face of Star Wars. Like there's not really anyone else that's prominent that everybody knows. Yeah. Well, at its core, he is the creator, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to prepare for this, I actually watched the documentary on Disney Plus about Star Wars when it, uh, I think about the original trilogy, like the whole story behind it. Oh yeah, that one was good. Yeah. Um, I can go into that a little later, but uh, what do you want to start off with, Danny? Um, well, just what we're talking about right now, you know, I do, I think that I, I agree with you guys that it's both a, a yes and a no thing. I think that, 
I think it went through phases because before Phantom Menace came out, everybody, I think, gave him too much credit for all the good things. Mm -hmm. And after the prequels came out, everybody gave him too much credit for all the bad things. And then now it's, since we have the sequel trilogy, it's back to the way it was. We give him too much credit for all the good things. And I think that just shows how kind of two-faced the the fan base is because you really, the hate that they gave George Lucas for the the prequels was just, like Star Wars fans take things too far. Yeah, of course. They really do. I mean, look what they're doing to the actress who played Rose in, in Last Jedi. I mean, they they're like harassing her personally and like taking out all the, the anger on her. And they did the same thing to Hayden Christensen. And it really, it, it took people kind of speaking up and saying that it wasn't the actor's fault in the prequels to, to get people to like quit harassing the actors personally. Mm-hmm. Like they did yeah. to uh, Jake Lloyd, like the guys like ruined, like ruined his life. The that's in Jake Lloyd, right? Yeah, the original Anakin. Yeah, I mean, they ruined that kid's life. And, you know, luckily people now are kind of starting to come forward and and stick up for the the sequel trilogy actors because it it isn't their fault. I think there's a few things to keep in mind, though, when it comes to this stuff, at least with the fan feedback. So when you think about it, for the Star Wars in its entirety, like all nine movies, the entire saga, when you think of the times they came out, so the first film was what 1977 yeah yeah so think of it this way you're living in a time when there's no social media and there's no internet right so when you're reporting about the feedback of star wars you know you have people showing clips of the the actual fans that appreciate the series you don't have the haters Mm -hmm. there's no hub or sort of uh i guess uh outlet for people who actually hate the film to vent you know because i've met people you know that are in their 60s that were like yeah star wars came out and i wasn't a fan because they exist obviously yeah but i think partly what uh what contributes to this whole idea of like the original trilogy being so good is that they only showed the good the actual positive feedback Mm -hmm. because you know that you want good press for the movies and then and this is my personal take of course and then when you think of the prequel trilogy, this is when the internet is starting to get bigger and, you know, the dot-com era has passed and we're in, like, full-on, like, social media environment, I guess you could put it, by the time the prequel trilogy ends and people are able to share their thoughts online. And then now with the sequel trilogy, it has this weird, almost misfortune of existing at a time when you have so many platforms to talk on and communicate and express your opinions on whatever subject it is. And I think we see a lot more negativity based around the films, mainly because yes, fan, you know, fans that want their movies a particular way, but also because of how vocal people are allowed to be, we're going to see a lot more of that than the other trilogies. Yeah, that that's very I think true. That's true. Yeah. So that's what I've noticed at least because I like to think that there's definitely a good amount of people that don't like these films as much as people that love these films. Yeah. And yeah. Well, wasn't the, I know that the critical consensus on empire strikes back was not positive when it first came out. And now that's considered to be like one of what, not only the best star Wars movie, but like one of the greatest movies ever made. So I, I thought it was a hit from across the, like from day one. I remember, I know that critics didn't, I think fans liked it. I don't think critics liked it or something. I know that there was, yeah. Cause like I, even my dad was telling me that, that like a lot of people didn't like Empire Strikes Back when it came out, especially cause it was such a change of pace from A New Hope. Cause you gotta think about, it, they really did go uber dark with uh, Empire Strikes Back compared to uh, um, A New Hope. But fact check me on that one because they're not like the twist or something huh well it's it's funny you bring that up because in that documentary i recently watched that was the goal he was like this is the middle movie this is where things go dark mm-hmm. quite literally yeah. and figuratively and go back light in the third yeah, yeah exactly it's typically it's you know it's like storytelling 101 mm-hmm. yeah you know, danny would know obviously <laughs> like, yes yeah, yeah it's, so I've had that shoved down my throat in all my creative writing classes exactly i was right there with you like yeah. <laughs> 
you want to see your heroes beaten down, but so you can watch them rise again. Yeah. And that's what he went for. And you know, that's what he achieved. And, and that's why I love that movie so much. It's so dark. I guess you have to look at the movie without knowing the result in Jedi. So I think that's hard for us. Yeah, now. that's the thing. We exist yeah. in a world post uh, original trilogy. Mm-hmm. So you know yeah. that it has a good resolution, but I think yeah. without that full picture, it could seem a little. Yeah, that's good. I can I, uh, I can see that. But even then, yeah, the fans loved it back then, mm-hmm. and people love it to death today. Yeah. I think that that really is the the gold standard Star Wars movie. And I think that brings us into like my first point. George really didn't have a lot to do with Empire Strikes Back. No, he did not. <laughs> like at all. Um, I uh, I found out why he jumped off the movie. Explain. What is that? Again, my source being the Star Wars documentary that just <laughs> happens to be on the Disney Plus service, right? That could so, be all fake news, though. You know, I don't trust yeah, Disney. Uh, fair warning. I don't trust <laughs> mega corporations. But it makes sense. So, you know, the first movie, he definitely had a lot to do with. You could just feel it. Uh, he worked really... I have no doubt he worked really hard on that movie. It is his creation at its core. And he did have a lot of input on a lot of stuff. And he shaped the movie the way he wanted it to be. And he took part in, you know, all the, all of its production practically. And I have no doubt that that's honestly true. And the thing was, it's hard to make a brand new style of film on your own, which he set out to do. Star Wars did do a lot for film and he was just exhausted. That was, he was so honest about it. He was like, I was tired. He's like working on one whole movie, almost killed him in the sense that like it was just over over exhausting and too much work and he was like i have an idea where i want the second movie to go but i'm going to contact people to work on it yes and And that was it it was to save himself some mental and physical energy yeah and apparently that's why marcia lucas who's the one who really saved a new hope because I, i don't think people people are very quick to forget this nowadays is that the original cut of a new hope was awful yeah the direction of the film was like completely different yeah and uh i have the original i don't like it's it's not an original because i'm poor but i have a reproduction print of the uh marvel comic for star wars when the the first movie was coming out and they based that heavily off of the the original script so you see it's a lot different than the uh than uh than the movie and Biggs Darklighter had a bigger part in it. Um, there was more, there's a lot more with Luke on Tatooine and everything. And it just, it isn't as good. But it, it sounded like it felt a lot more like those uh, movies of that time. Like yeah. Movies. Yeah. Those it was kind of really cheesy. And then it was just like him with his friends. Yeah. Like some Back in the then, movies were a lot, you know, they were a lot different. And yeah, they were paced a lot slower too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most yeah. films, you know, weren't super action heavy in that day. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So having uh, that like third act with like that crazy action was yeah. huge for that time. Well, just look at a- look at the movie Alien. How slow that movie is compared to like Aliens in the '80s when everything like really ramped up. So uh, and yeah, Alien came out at the around the same time. But um, yeah, so. I think the the story of the first movie of A New Hope really, I think, shows the importance of having people to critique you, <laughs> you know, and that's really, I think, why the prequels went so downhill is because they, they who was going to say no to George Lucas? That was the big thing. He was like, I'm going to do this. And everyone's like, you got it, George. Like, <laughs> he literally did it and he, nobody stopped him. Uh have you guys ever watched the behind the scenes of like the, the making of the prequels? Oh yeah. <laughs> so awkward. Everyone's he just he comes out and he's just like, here's the first draft of Attack of the Clones. They're like, great. He goes, like, we start filming in a couple months. I'm just you're not gonna <laughs> it's like you're not gonna rewrite the script a couple times. Yeah, he he literally he wrote and directed the whole prequel trilogy, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Nobody got in his way. Nobody 
I was like, I don't think anyone ever helped assist with anything. Uh, it makes you think about what could have been too. Cause you look at a new hope and like Han Solo was supposed to be a giant green monster. Wasn't Luke Skywalker supposed to be a midget or a small it, person? <laughs> His or name was originally person. Sky Killer. That's I know that for sure. Sky Killer, yeah. they they went through so many different. Like Jabba the Hutt was just some dude. Yeah, the original. Coat. Yeah, the original scene with the guy who plays Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, and yeah. I, they basically swapped that with Han Solo. Like, yeah. it made him the human and Jabba the Hutt the weird alien thing. It's. Uh... I think, you know, when looking at like the prequel trilogy, he definitely. He could have used some help. And I think yeah. it shows like that Star Wars as lowest. And when like the sequel trilogy ended, the thing that's funny is how, you know, quote unquote, how awful you may find the prequel trilogy. People started saying those movies were better. That's what's getting me mad. And that's where I was like, okay, we need to stop and like take a few steps back. Yeah. I don't know. What, what do you guys prefer though? Like, do you prefer like sequel or sequel trilogy or um, uh, prequels? You wish this, Ben? Sorry, hello. Internet's cutting out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah we, we trash internet. <laughs> I think, okay, well, I'm, I'm actually one of the people that prefer the prequels over the sequels. Oof. But I think it depends Explained on what... us. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think it really depends on what what makes you like Star Wars. Like what makes you such a fan. And for me it's like the world building and like just the the world that gets created in the films. Which I feel like there wasn't any world building in the sequels. It was very just like reused planets and like themes. Nothing really in- new or interesting was introduced. And it's funny. While in the prequels, it was like a whole new world that was being created. It's funny because I actually prefer the sequel trilogy. <laughs> well, it, I think, yeah. So it's like, what makes you a fan of Star Wars? What's your favorite part about it? Yeah. I guess. Well, the way I put it is, I like the prequel trilogy for the memes. <laughs> one of my best friends, one of my best friends, told yeah. me that, uh, one of my best friends, he has this idea that people think they like the prequels when really they like the memes mm. yeah. I think- well i think even before like prequel memes and all that stuff i was still well oh. also because i i watched it as a kid well so how I old are you been? there's a lot of nostalgia in that <laughs> are you, are i'm you turning 25 age? this year okay yeah so you're in our age group that's our yeah. star wars we grew up with that's yeah, yeah. so i remember uh, going to the theaters watching attack of the clones watching um Revenge of Sith. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, yeah, it's our generation of Star Wars when we were kids. That's the thing. So it's a little hard to shake it. But, you know, I say the memes. When when I say the memes, I think of all the quotable lines and just the ridiculous scenes. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the last 30 minutes to Revenge of the Sith. Because I love those last 30 minutes so much that mm-hmm. whole scene just looks like a wrestling match of two bad actors about to throw down and you know you get obi-wan with his plus two high ground and all this other stuff it's just it's too good like the comedy at least mm-hmm. yeah especially when you watch it with friends like i definitely don't think they're good films <laughs> but i mean i can just from watching them prequels sequels i can just tell you i don't know why but prequels much more entertaining for me sequels i just yeah for i wasn't a fan the sequels i think force awakens was it was safe i think that's like a very modern vanilla star wars movie that's how i put it i just felt they could have told a new story introduced like something interesting instead of just falling back on what they knew worked well that's kind right. of why people hated Last Jedi because they tried something different, mm-hmm. right? And you know, with the prequels for me is that like I I grew up with the prequels just like you guys, and when watching them as a little kid because I only saw Revenge of the, of, of the Sith in in theaters, and I just remember something always feeling off about them. 
Like I would watch Revenge of the Sith over and over because I I do I still think that that's a it's not a good movie but it's a movie that has enough good things in it that I can enjoy it and but I just never had any interest in Attack of the Clones or, or Phantom Menace and it took me a long time to realize that like oh shit these movies aren't actually good and it was I remember it was my high school history teacher that pointed that out he's like you know those movies aren't good right. I was like, oh, that's right. And, and, you know, to think of to say, you couldn't say back then that, like, something Star Wars wasn't good in my mind, you know. And uh, that's when I kind of had my little epiphany. But something I do like about the prequels, I love the worlds, the different kind of types of planets that they actually got creative with it. I do like that they introduced new alien species and that, that kind of stuff. I, I love the world-building aspects. I do like that... The prequels have the advantage of we all knew where they were going. Like, this is just to get Anakin to turn into Darth Vader. And I think that's a big advantage they have over the sequel trilogy. So, um, but they're still, they're not very good. <laughs> I don't think, like, I'll, I don't think Phantom Menace is the worst thing ever, like people make it out to be. It's not. Uh, to me, it's just forgettable. Um, Attack of the Clones is pretty bad, though. I, I, I don't see very many redeeming qualities of that movie. Because at least Phantom Menace had Darth Maul. But, you know, with, with the sequel trilogy, I like Force Awakens, and I gave them the excuse of playing it safe. But I was like, you better do something epic in the next two movies. Because, like, there's a lot of great starting off points. I mean, I know J.J. Abrams just came out and put a fresh coat of paint on things, and didn't really add much, but I mean, he we had a Finn. You know, he was a defected scor- stormtrooper. Um, the Knights of Ren and all these other cool ideas that they could have ran with, and they just did not- none of them. Yeah, none of them. Yeah, I still haven't seen Rise of Skywalker. Keep in mind, and I oh I, no, I'm you trying. Have you have you seen it yet, Ben? I wish I unsaw it. Oh Jesus! What about you, Brandon? I I I, I saw it at release night at two in the morning i was yeah, i saw a release week it was um you know for me <sighs> how do i put this i like last jedi no i love last jedi okay I actually i like the last jedi because they were trying to do something different yeah, yeah. i do i that's, do that's the only thing i wanted from them is to at least try I, I, I think we can Last all Jedi. agree here that Last Jedi gets way too much hate. Well, yeah. it gets way too much hate by the people that love Rise of Skywalker. Exactly. But if you like Rise of... Yeah. If Rise like of Skywalker, Skywalker was made... To, uh, it was a, just a giant apology letter. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. But it's just a lot of, like... It feels very, like, fan service. for like, trying oh, to just, definitely. like, go for the things that he thinks Star Wars fans like. And that, that's why I haven't watched it yet. And I, that movie was dead to me as soon as I saw who the writer was. The writer was Chris Taro. Chris Taro wrote Batman v Superman. Yes. <laughs> I did, so, did not know that. <laughs> as soon as I saw that uh, on sense. there, I was just like, I'm done. I don't want to see it. Like, I have no desire to see this movie because I know exactly what it's going to be. Don't and watch from, it. Yeah, from everybody who's told me that, you know, about this, that, uh, that's what it was and um you know did you read the spoilers oh yeah i've read the whole okay. thing i did i don't care okay so I just we, don't care we, we, anymore. we can bring in spoilers in here right oh uh, yeah no i mean if you that spoiler alert guys um your childhood is uh gets raped even more than it did with the prequels basically <laughs> for me like yes it is fan service the movie and yes it is a perfect example of how fandom goes too far. And we like, it's when the art gets affected by the viewer. And I think that's, that's not what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be the other way around. The art is supposed to affect the viewer, you know? (laughs) And I think that movie has no soul in it in the sense that it's just there to just be like, all right, Chewbacca got his medal because he didn't in return of the Jedi, you know, like, it kind of okay sorry to to interrupt you i just gotta stop this right here i will always be angry that chewbacca did not get a medal in a new hope what was maybe you should watch this movie 
<laughs> I mean, uh, what was up with that? He helped destroy the Death Star. He was right there with Han Solo and did not get a medal at the end of the movie. What the hell is up with that? My boy Chewie got done dirty. All right, continue, Brandon. Sorry. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things that, like, the movie doesn't feel like it's there to finish a trilogy and a whole series. It's there to just be like, all right, guys, we know you won't stop complaining about Last Jedi because we – said a few things and now you're all triggered and angry so here's this movie you know yeah it like backtracked on everything and then it went yeah and you know when it came out there's all these articles on it and you know one of my best friends is a huge fan of course and he read an article saying that it's like a game of improv you know (laughs) the prequel the thing about the prequel the thing about the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy is this george lucas was like i want the story to go this way for the original trilogy. So his directors worked with him and they took the story that direction. The prequel trilogy had one cohesive story as messy as it is. It starts and then it ends. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and it feels consistent. The problem. And the thing is you can have multiple directors and you know, with force awakens going into last Jedi, everything makes sense. Everything's connected. But then when you throw a rise of Skywalker in, my friend told me he read an article saying that it's basically a game of improv where J.J. Abrams is like, yes, this. And then you have Ryan Johnson going, no, that. And then J.J. Abrams again going, actually, yes, this all as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, They had no excuse to screw up the sequel trilogy this badly with multiple directors and writers and everything when you have the MCU. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you just know it. you can whatever critique you have of the Marvel movies, you know they're cook they're the GM of of movies, you know cookie cutter movies with a new every single one has a new coat of paint on it, whatever. But they have a consistent story and a tone and a continuity, and they know mm-hmm. where they're going. I don't know how they couldn't do that for three movies. And this is, a, this is what brings me back to something that I really have that's positive for George Lucas. And that is, he's not a good, I don't think he's a good writer. I don't think he's a good director, but he is an amazing idea man. And I think yeah. that he was born to be a movie producer. His m- imagination is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. I think that kind of shows in the prequels where he kind of let his imagination go wild. You can yeah. see like in the world building, but just not in the writing. Yes. Like the yeah. execution. Did you know that he wrote the droid factory scene in like the car on the way to (laughs) shooting the scene and the way to the studio? Because I think he just has too many ideas. Yeah. They say some good, some bad. Yeah. They said he would do that though. He would like add ideas in at the last minute after the script is already done. You're like, well, I want to do this today, guys. Yeah. Because if you look at like the overall story of original trilogy, it's coherent, like prequel trilogy. There's like a good story there. But if you look at the sequels, like it's all even over. if you try to redo it, the story doesn't go anywhere. I think you still could redo it with these characters. I think it would take pacing things out better and not making stupid decisions. Like Last Jedi did make I could I get why some people are angry at it. And you know, for example, like <laughs> hear me out here. Like we'll we'll save this mainly for when we do our sequel trilogy review. Um, God, we're getting so off topic here, but this is what Star Wars does to us. Um, yeah, brings up the worst. Yeah, so like I, I don't, I don't like what uh, I, I don't like the direction they went with Luke. Um, I didn't mind the way he died or anything, but it was like, or that I didn't mind the fact that he was pissed off at the Jedi or whatever. Because I mean, if I were in his shoes, I would feel the same way. Where I'd be like, screw it, I'm gonna go hide on an island and die. So I, I don't mind that, but I think that he deserved a better redemption arc. Like they should have saved his death for Rise of Skywalker. I mean, he comes back in Rise of Skywalker, right? And then but he is a of- ghost. I read the Wikipedia summary. Yeah, he's a he's a force ghost. And you know, he, he kinda- should have came back as like the god Luke that we have in the e- the original EU. Which okay, people complain about the original EU not being canon anymore. They said they treated Luke so much better. It was like the same shit that they did to Luke in the comics, how he died. Like he gets voted out of his own Jedi order and exiled into the galaxy and he dies of old age. Like, <laughs> how is that a better ending for Luke than Lin Last Jedi? But the whole know. family was destined for like, you know, death. death. 
you know like that's the overall thing like it's just they were great i think the main problem things and... is they they kind of tried or in the first movie of the, the sequels they just kind of removed everything that happened in like the last six movies and same thing in rise of Skywalker. Where like bringing back Palpatine kind of just ruins everything in the last six movies. Yeah, that's something that I think *Heir to the Empire*, the original sequel books, they were they were book and then they they got converted into a graphic novel. But I think that that is something that they did that was a lot better was that there was a new republic and there mm-hmm. was no empire and Thrawn was pretty much out. I think he was in the outer rim galaxies. And he was like stirring people up saying like, you know, they don't care about you out here, this new empire. And he was rebuilding the empire uh, and the Navy under the, like the Imperial Navy under, you know, while, while the Jedi are ruling the galaxy again. So it was kind of a flip thing. And I think that that could have been like, it was dumb what they did, like with the star killer base. And they're like, we didn't even get to know this new Republic. Anyways, back to George. <laughs> no, I remember that. Isn't that what that's what we came here to talk about? Yeah. Um, well, overall, I think to to bring it back, I think. Watch if you're like showing how the the parts of George that are underappreciated, like yeah, his, his vision and like the ideas that he's able to come up with. Yeah, I think that he's an amazing idea man. The man was mm-hmm. born to be a movie producer, and honestly. I think that they should have made him the producer of um, I think him and JJ Abrams probably could have made a good team mm-hmm. yeah. or if they brought him in like Lauren, like cause Lawrence Kasdan worked as a writer on the first on force awakens and he, and he wrote um, empire and Jedi. So I, they could have really, they could, if they, I think if they would have had Lucas as like I said, a producer on the sequel trilogy and had, Kept the you could have had the same directors. Kept Colin uh, Trevorrow, I think his name is. Colin, I thought it was Colin Trevor. Trevor, whatever. Uh, Trevor, yeah. So Colin Trevor, like they could have kept those three directors, and they could have had JJ and Lawrence Kasdan and George sit down and plan a new trilogy, aka no Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> so, because you can see like the better execution in the sequels. But then it's just lacking like a vision and like good ideas in it. They're better made movies. Mm-hmm. They're just they don't do anything. They feel very like empty. Yeah, I mean, I, and think... I think that's what George brings. But then in the old ones, you can feel like it has that soul, but the execution seems a little yeah, you know, funky. New Hope. He had a lot to do with that movie, and that movie is very boring. It's very <laughs> <Yeah>. overrated. Um, <laughs> very overrated. I. Uh... Yeah, but it was, like the concepts that he brings are, yeah, interesting. Exactly, and one way or another, you know, yeah, because like I said, like like I said earlier, though, Empire is like the best one, and that's the one he had to do with the least. And I think that's really where it comes comes to mind that I I don't think that the directors of Empire and Jedi and nor the writers and the editors really get enough credit because we really star Wars fans are so obsessed with now that now with defending George that I think they're giving him too much credit for those, Mm -hmm. those movies. Yeah. It's, it it was weird to think that there'd be a a day and age where that could happen. I, I couldn't have called this when I was young. I thought, I thought it was over at revenge of the Sith. Yeah, there was people that were basically like, yeah, the movies are terrible, but that's what we got, so we enjoy it for what mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. And then, I don't know, I think I think fand, fandom, whatever you want to call it, it's going too far. Yeah. It's gotten way too far to the point where it's like... People can't enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, they can't enjoy it for what it is, and they also just need a reason to complain, and there always has to be some sort of pedestal Mm-hmm. And at the same time, someone to point the finger at, you know. I, I definitely think that the fans kind of had a little bit of a fan in, or a little bit of a part in ruining the the sequel trilogy. Yeah, definitely. Even, like even even before it started, I think that's why they started off so safe with Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. There was no other way to do it. Yeah, because imagine if they made like Last Jedi as the first movie of the sequel trilogy. 
Oh, jeez. But here's the problem. And I think the biggest problem that everyone has is nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And I heard this on a YouTube channel because I was saying this my whole life. And then I saw another YouTuber say it. And I was like, okay, I'm not crazy. But I guarantee you, if the sequel trilogy was the trilogy we got in the 70s and 80s, people would love those movies more. Yeah. I, I, guarantee, so. I guarantee, even if it was the prequel trilogy, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever would have been the first one would be the one everyone holds the pedestal to. It's because it's because you also don't have that original trilogy to compare it to. Because no matter what, we're always going to be comparing it to the OG trilogy. And I think Mark Hamill made a great point: is that you know I think he kind of had poor Mark Hamill looked so defeated during this interview where he said this, and you know I, I feel bad for the way he's kind of been treated. But um, he was saying you 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 can't lightning you can't capture lightning in a bottle twice or whatever that that saying is you know so i i don't think that you're ever going to get that original trilogy ever again and so stop the prequels i don't think tried to recreate it excuse me but the sequel trilogy did and yeah that was a big mistake i think like for star wars to keep going they have to go the route of like the mandalorian or like just like the small stories that they can tell elsewhere away from like the main story. Yeah. And not try to like, yeah, try to redo the original trilogy. Right. I mean, look at, uh, when you think of it, look at the other spinoff films where one does have to do with the main story and one doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, they tried doing their own thing in both movies, but if you look at Rogue One, which in my opinion is probably top three, in the top three best Star Wars movies. I think it's so... I like Rogue One. So overrated. <laughs> God, I can't stand the fans of that movie. Oh. I I like it a lot. You know, you're I like it. Me, but I, I, really I like the last 30 minutes, but that's it. I think for fixing a small plot hole in a script, it's a great film. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I'll give it that. Like, I think the effects are great. It finally gave us a new... A good space battle. I don't think we've had a really good space battle since Return of the Jedi. And to me, Return of the Jedi has the best Star Wars space battle out of any of the movies. But I think one thing lacking from the sequels is also good action. Yeah. Like the large scale action that Star Wars is kind of known for. Yeah, the space battles have been really underwhelming outside of Rogue One and uh in the the new movies. But uh yeah, I can see that actually. They they focus more on the lightsaber battles, and even then, they're not that great. <laughs> but uh, you know, no matter how you look at Rogue One, though, it, it's basically a prequel slash. It's a sequel to Resident yeah, sequel to Revenge of the Sith and a prequel to A New Hope. But since it has to do with the original trilogy more, people just automatically love it. The general mm -hmm. masses is in favor for that film. Exactly. And I made that, that point in a previous video did that I did called like, are we tired of star Wars? And that was one of the things that I, I pointed out that, you know, the only reason I think people like rogue one is because they just love the original trilogy so much that they're going to look past all the flaws of that movie. Oh yeah. Just because it, it's giving them what they it's, it's pandering to them, you know? Yeah. And I, know I think it's of, pandering like, done in a better way than how it was done like, oh yeah recently yeah no i i i, I agree with you so there. it's like we capturing can... the feel without trying to like do explicit things that please the fans yeah. right and i don't think that it had too much bearing on the on the story as a whole either you know so it didn't like it didn't ruin anything although it does kind of make it, it it makes the opening of a new hope a little bit harder for me to believe <laughs> that she's just like we're on a diplomatic mission to alderaan <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm just like i'm just like he just saw you take the plans and put them in the ship like 30 minutes ago so i i don't know um, yeah but then you look at the other spinoff story you look at solo i saw mm -hmm. i watched a little bit of solo when i was working I at, at it the wasn't theater too bad it's not that bad. for me it's not it, it's not terrible but i'm just like this uh -huh. isn't something i'd want to you needed the mandalorian people to make that movie mm -hmm. But I think I'm okay with them 
like they don't have to make amazing stuff every time like that's impossible yes they do because you have an unlimited <laughs> budget access to anybody you want and i i hold these movies i hold that these studios up to a higher standard because i'm just like you can do whatever you want in a movie like mm-hmm. You have so much money and access to so many resources, you know, compared to the film. If, if George Lucas and his team could make a new hope back in the seventies with nothing and turn out that movie, even though I think it's overrated, it's still a great movie and turn that out. But you guys can't turn out a masterpiece today with unlimited resources. I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm not giving them that. I think, well, I don't know. I feel like Solo shouldn't have come out when it did, personally. Or yeah, the timing was definitely bad. The timing, and I think they could have done a whole different movie. I'm fine with like the side story stuff. And, you know, I think they could have just done a whole different film. I think having an oddly solo, this is such a terrible pun that I'm not even trying to do, a solo, solo film. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, he's a beloved character, but we could have done, chosen. We could have chose from like how many of the characters, you know? Yeah, like you can tell a new storyline. I like something. I don't. I'd almost like would want a like Kashyyyk movie with the Wookies and seeing like Chewbacca's origin story in a way. I I think that they. I would have been down for a, a Han Solo movie, but not a Han Solo origin movie because it's like the Clint Eastwood's character, the man with no name. You don't yeah. want to know where he came from. He's just a he's just a drifter who comes out of the he just comes riding out of the west. He's a stranger and everything, and that's kind of how Han Solo is. Like I don't want to know his backstory. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. They could have done a great uh, a great idea that I've always thought for a Star Wars story would have been something like a smuggler gets something that gets gets a like this is kind of like what they did in the Mandalorian, but he gets something that everybody's after. So like, and he's got to get it to the other side of the galaxy safely, and you know, I think that could have been a great Han Solo movie. Have the Empire after him. Have everybody in the world, in the galaxy, after him for this one thing that he's carrying, and he's got to get it to the other side of the galaxy. So, um, yeah, but then people always try to find something to complain about. Like, if it wasn't going to be about the story, it was going to be about the actor. There's oh, always going to be something. Yeah, and if it wasn't the actor, it was going to be the director or you know the special effects, whatever. There was always going to be something to complain about. Right. That's why I think like there's always gonna be something that's gonna be a miss. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a sad thing is that you're just never gonna please Star Wars fans. You can't please everyone. Everyone likes it for different aspects and Right. Yeah. And uh you know, I to kind of go back a little bit on what I said earlier that you know, I don't think they have any excuses. It's just like I, I do get it that there's a huge amount of things that go into making a good movie and that you can't please everybody. It's just that I think that they really did drop the ball harder than they could have on, on like yeah. wrapping up the, the sequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. And just Star Wars in general, I think, with the, the new thing. And they didn't put the right people in charge. Well, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Who do you put in charge? Do you put George Lucas in charge? Or do you? No. Yeah. Yeah. So no, especially, I think, at the point before the sequels, George Lucas was regarded so low that they wouldn't put him in charge. Yeah. I you know, Go ahead, Brandon. I was gonna say, and that's the thing, though. Like when they always have like a reason to hate on him, and when he was at his lowest, mm-hmm. they blamed him for everything. And then now right. they want to bring him back. And now, and then, you like, know, and then like, if something oh. goes wrong, then they'll cast him aside again. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's. God, Star Wars fans have we have ruined Star Wars for ourselves. <laughs> do, you, do you blame him for selling? Like realistically? No, yeah, I, I do not. I, yeah. Oh, he made like what seven point eight billion dollars. Yeah, well, and then he doesn't have rich. to deal with it anymore. But do you think he regrets it? Yes. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. I think as a creator, and this is, I'm pretty sure Danny could relate to as someone who's trying to make a name, or at least both of us for so, trying to make a name for ourselves in a creative industry. It's not easy to put your heart and soul into something, mm-hmm. you know, from scratch. And then just sell it. And, you know, there's so, there's one thing to just sell copies of something you made, but there's a whole other aspect to it when you are selling the sole ownership legally 
of a property you pretty much created on your own, of course, with help with other people, but you know, it's not easy. Especially if they're going to like, yeah, yeah, go like the way that they did with it. True. And you know, with, I, I don't blame him for selling it, but in the deal though, then Bob Iger went after, uh, elaborated on this, why George Lucas felt betrayed in his book is that he did have, I think kind of a, penned outline or something about how he uh, for the sequel trilogy Mm -hmm. and he was like you know they were like oh yeah we'll use these and everything and from what i hear the promise was is that he was supposed to stay on as a creative consultant for the new movies and then they as soon as he signed the contract they just casted him aside didn't use his ideas and george even i think he reached out to them was just like wow he was like wait i thought i was gonna be or like involved or you know i was i thought i was gonna you're gonna go with my or uh, my ideas for the sequel trilogy and everything and like and he felt betrayed by that and yeah i don't know if that's 100 percent true I, i'm just kind of going off of hearsay here but um i could see where he would be bitter about that and i think that i fr- i from what i hear about his ideas i think it was something about uh luke and leia and han's grandkids or something like i i wouldn't have been interested in seeing that but you know i think that there would have been some benefit keeping on keeping him on as some sort of creative director or something or like creative consultant or a Mm -hmm. producer he he wouldn't have needed to write a single thing they could have just sat in a room with him and just like what do you think and he spitball ideas yeah Mm -hmm. and you know Again, he's got a fantastic imagination. And, you know, he wasn't the greatest writer, let's be honest, mm-hmm. as no. we've said already. But I think I agree with you. Like, if they just kept him on the side and just said, hey, George, what do you think of this? Or, you know, we have this idea of yours, but can we do this to it? You know? Mm-hmm. And I think. I think it would have had a lot more life in the world. Yeah, because they definitely dropped the ball a little by not having him involved at all. It's like, I hate to use the MCU as an example again, since Danny already used it. But, you know, they had consulted the comic creators when making yeah, those. They were have that's why the costumes look so good. They had, and in, in the right, and like, some mm-hmm. of the writing is so good is that they, they included the people who work on these characters. Because it has that like little bit of like, the soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like just... That, that's why they work. Wish DC could learn the same thing. Uh, <laughs> oh Jeff Johns, write everything. Uh, I know, Jeff Johns, save us. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, again, that's why it works. You have the artists, you have the writers, and you have everybody else going, yes, this is what we did. This is how you could translate it to film. Mm-hmm. And Disney was like, all right, here's your check. We're out. You know, we're yeah. going like JJ, you make money, right? <laughs> he did the first mission of Paul. <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it literally. I saw this meme. Um, and it was, uh, it was like the the American. It was like an American citizen acting asking uh, Donald Trump, and it was just like you know, since the coronavirus. Or, shit, we're gonna get taken down for me saying that. Um, the virus that shall remain unnamed. Uh, is happening you know can we get medicare for all or you know can we or can we get you know better benefits and all that to try to help take care of the american citizens and everything (laughs) it was donald trump says he goes how about i just give you twelve hundred dollars just to fuck off everyone's excited yeah and i was just like that kind of reminds me of how they did of what they did to george lucas it's just like yeah we'll include you in it or like george is just like yeah can i uh you know, can I be involved in the making of the new movies and everything? There's like, how about we just give you seven point eight billion dollars to fuck off? Amazing. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of money, though. <laughs> I mean, I don't feel bad for him for that. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. he's sitting pretty. I was telling um, I was telling Ben before you came on that uh, I uh, I went out with this girl from Marin County, and her friend worked at a as a waitress at. At Applebee's, at an Applebee's, there she was telling me, and George Lucas is a frequent customer of that Applebee's, and she was saying that he would just get so mad anytime people would like, you know, point out that he's George Lucas, is hella crotchety, and he liked it when people would just like pretend, like pretend that he's a regular guy. So it's kind of hard know. to be when 
when you created the biggest film franchise ever. I know you are like. Could you imagine being that famous? He never, he never set on being like that. He just wanted to make films. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, he wanted money, of course. Who doesn't? But he wasn't trying to be a big like superstar. He just wanted to make his film. Yeah, he just wants to get his ideas. Yeah. Out there. Right. And I think that's why he's kind of a hermit, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, someone that like is in their imagination so much, I can see them being like that. Right. And you know, I think that we we can really just to sum up what to sum up, you know, I think uh, why what we think of George. I like we, like we said earlier, he either gets too much credit for the good stuff or too much credit for the bad stuff. I think he gets too much credit for the execution of the original movies, but true, I do too. Not enough credit for how essential or how important he is for like that soul of Star Wars. Right, and you know we really we don't give enough credit to you know uh, Irving Irving Kirshner or um, Richard. How do you pronounce the? Uh, they all have like these names that are hard to remember. Yeah, Richard Mar Marcand or something. Mm. The, the, his the wife director. or his first wife. Yeah, or yeah, Marcia Lucas or whatever. We don't give Star Wars fans in in general do not give these people the credit they deserve for, mm-hmm. you know, because they're just movies. not like recognizable. Like George's. Yeah. Like not George any- is so iconic. Nobody gets credit for anything besides George. I mean. Maybe besides George, everyone loves to praise Ewan McGregor for Obi Wan in the in the prequel trilogy. It's because I think he's like one of the only good performances. <laughs> he's actually, but like his character is actually really good. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Obi Wan is just a great is a great character, and a, a friend of mine brought this up is that that's a good point. Is that Obi Wan was really the last like true Jedi, if you think about it? Because yeah, yeah, he objected to the to the clone wars and everything he was always like you know we're not supposed to be generals and and an art mm-hmm. leading an army or whatever we're supposed to be the keepers of peace and um and I, for people who you know, people get mad saying the last jedi like shit all over the jedi lore and everything but you got to look at it what luke is talking about and why he's bitter with the jedi in the movie is because of the decisions george made to per- how he portrayed the jedi in the prequels how they're yeah. supposed to be like too powerful yeah that the, 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 too confident in their abilities yeah that they pretty much they brought the end they brought themselves down like it was kind of their fault why they why their order fell and i think that that's a that's an interesting thing i, I that um yeah, yeah i don't know uh i looked up the names real quick so director Irvin kirshner yeah, Empire Strikes Produ- Back. Uh, producer Gary Kurtz. Yes, he did all three of the originals. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, you have Lay Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan. There we go. Yeah, Lawrence Kasdan, I think is he. He's one of the the great movies. He wrote uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark too. And I I don't know if he did the other Indiana Jones movies, but I don't think so. Just the first one. Yeah, but he's definitely a talented writer. Yeah, and, and he did Force Awakens, I think. Which I mean, I. <laughs> Let me see. Did he do Last Jedi? I'm going to look it up right now. No, I think that was all Ryan Johnson. Oh, God. No wonder. He's a good film creator. I really like his other films. <laughs> I, I do. I got to see Knives Out. Like, I've really been wanting to see that. Oh, yeah. That written movie. by Ryan Johnson. Okay. Okay. Rant time here. Sorry, guys. You have Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote the greatest Star Wars movie out of all of them on your writing staff and you don't bring him back for this. You get the writer of Batman V Superman over <laughs> Lawrence Kasdan to write the, Oh yeah. I don't know about that one. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey man, Batman V Superman still made money, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> It lost money. It had like the, the biggest drop off in history after it's a, uh, you know, Justice League had the worst drop. Oh, I, I didn't even see Justice League. I saw it. I saw it at my cousin's house. I was like, there's a reason I didn't see this in theaters. Oh, man, that extended cut is so good. <laughs> oh, you're, are you guys, do you guys want to see the Snyder cut? Uh, always. Oh, no. Dude, <laughs> people, else is for it. It is Wait, a- at, least, at least Star Wars isn't where 
DC is right now. Yeah, at least Star Wars I think is salvageable, like and everything. Like it just get rid of stop hiring these creators that just Okay, I'm gonna the politics also kind of ruined the new the sequel trilogy. <laughs> like identity politics ru- ruins everything it touches. Yeah. But and the, the the, the the original trilogy and the prequels were so good about incorporating different types of people into their movies. I mean, I don't know. You got Kit Fisto. Huh? Yeah, you got Kit Fisto. Exactly. You know, where where is it? Why don't we see any more? Okay, there, there's a lack of alien races, I notice, in the new sequel well, trilogy. That's something I, that just, that, I just realized that right now. I was like, there are not a lot of alien creatures in these movies. Yeah, no aliens. No interesting you know ships. There was a lot of aliens in the original trilogy, right? Why? Well, basically, George had this idea of like certain aliens he wanted, but because of their budget constraints, they were just like, well, we have this giant mantis doll, and we have like this melted face. And oh, have, yeah. You know, we got all these different costumes lying around. Let's just make Let's them do a helmet. <laughs> Yeah. And that's why there's so many random looking aliens because yeah. that's all they had. They just had, but it like, brings like a, a, a lot more life. I know. Like, well, that comes back to see. again, it's it's time of release. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's we would never time, accept anything like that nowadays. Yeah, in the in at the time in the 70s, movies tried a little harder. They didn't have the benefit of technology. They had to really mm-hmm. improvise, and that's where the soul comes in because you had to really push for something to stand out and like release. But the thing is these days is it's a lot easier to just digitize everything and, you know, edit it. Like, did you see the last scene in, um, Rise of Skywalker with all the ships? Yeah. And then they just, if you basically look at like different parts of the scene where all the ships come in, you can see like reused, like just basically copy pasted assets. Yeah. I mean, they do that for everything that has like multiple images of the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm talking I about. Gotta, I got to say this though the creativity was just unbelievable in Rise of Skywalker with those new Star Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> just a bigger Star Destroyer with a hey, It has a cannon on it. Yeah. <laughs> bigger is better. I, and, 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 and it wasn't like a Death Star cannon on each one. Yeah. yeah, but it just looks like a regular can. <laughs> the final order. Oh my god. Yeah, the final order. Oh god, I need to go back and re and reread Heir to the Empire. But yeah, you know, when those when the original trilogy came out, they really were like, We got it. it's a make or break, fellas, so mm-hmm. let's do what we can. And they put everything they had in those movies till everyone mm-hmm. is exhausted. If you watch that documentary, like that shows the behind the scenes, and like how they do all the puppets, how they did like Jabba the Hutt, it's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah like they had like people in one thing. Yeah. yeah, it's like a guy actually smoking to make the smoke come. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. They they really tried for that. Mm-hmm. You know, all the ba- all the like space battles were painted and had models. You know, mm-hmm. that requires a lot of effort. Yeah. I think that effort also like translates into like paying more attention to each piece exactly and that's what i'm saying like in the new movies everything's just digital yeah. so you mm-hmm. can kind of add it in later yeah that's something that the, the kind of like the uh, go ahead ben go ahead I'm ben. sorry i'm just freezing oh okay but well, anyway um sorry. i thought that the no, uh just wi-fi oh uh, yeah that's uh we're doing a number on our wi-fi right now um, I uh, that's something I felt about like the prequels felt very very I think that's why the prequels come off so awkward especially if you look at ep- episode 3 I think is like the worst it's just they don't know what to do because it's just everything's in front of a green screen mm-hmm. so like like the fight with you know how like Obi-Wan just stands there like frozen like a statue while like General Grievous like pulls out all his life <laughs> and everything like mm-hmm. So props to the actors for doing not as bad as they could have in the prequels. But I, I think that the the sequel trilogy was a little bit better. It felt a little bit more organic. But yeah, again, it's just like, you know, you could CGI anything nowadays. So it's, there's no risk, really. I, I don't feel like there's not as big of a risk as there was back then. I don't know. 
that's what I'm saying. Well, one thing George did that I don't think anyone likes is what he did to the the remastered versions. Oh, oh, like let's, talk about, you, let's talk you about. Let's talk about that then. You can't watch any of the original cuts anymore think, unless you have like a copy. He was like, "Oh wow, the technology exists. I can get my original vision out." And he's just like, "Let me layer everything." <laughs> exactly. And if you think that. This goes back to the whole thing that I do think George gets too much credit for the, like Ben said, the execution of the original trilogy Mm -hmm. is that he said that the special editions is how he wanted all the Star Wars movies to be. And I can only think of two changes and those entire special editions, all the ones we've gotten that are actually good. Were there any? Wait, which which changes were good? Uh... They changed the, uh, the, the singing scene, right? Where they break into. Oh song. yeah, that was great. That was yeah. my favorite. <laughs> but you actually like that? No. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I was like, oh, what the hell? Uh, I remember uh, the first time I saw that because, like, before I used to just watch it on VHS. Yeah, I have the original. And then I was showing VHS, someone yeah. the, the movies. I was like, and then I was like, what the fuck is this? When when did I just forget this? Yeah, I know, yeah. right? Uh, I I because I grew up on the original. I I had the original VHS copies before they were unedited, and when I saw the special edition, I was like, "What the hell is this?" It's like, why does it look so bad suddenly? Yeah, and um, but there was one scene that they they changed it in um, A New Hope because like some of the words are written in English, so they CGI'd over it and made it like the 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 language of the the galaxy. Which I thought that's, oh, okay. that's yeah, I was like that's okay. Like little things like that, I don't mind. Mm-hmm. I actually didn't even mind that they that they brought the Jabba scene back. Like if there were scenes that you had to delete just because you could not put them in the movie because you didn't have the technology at the time, I think that's okay. Resurrecting scenes like that, um, even though Jabba looks terrible, and movie. they make him yeah, kind of weak. He's all digital yeah. now, right? Yeah, and he walks. He lets Han walk on his tail. What the fuck? Yeah, like I feel like Jabba would have you killed for that but um i don't mind that but yeah i mean darth vader yelling no while he threw the emperor over, over the railing yeah that's uh han shot first han did shoot uh, first he will always have shot first always shot first how he just slightly moves his head <laughs> just, um, <laughs> yeah. dodges a blaster yeah I always, I had no problem as a little kid when Sean was, or when uh, Han was just like, yeah, I bet you have, just shoots him right in the face. I was like, okay, that's what he would do. Yeah, in his MO. George just needs a, like a filter to like filter out his good and bad ideas. I think the biggest thing they should have provided to the fans was letting us have the choice of a unedited cut Mm -hmm. and the special edition when watching like the Blu-ray. Yeah, like I'm fine with there being the special edition, but like making it so hard to find unedited versions yeah do you have to have you guys ever heard the despecialized editions yeah i got it uh i got it on a google doc if you or google drive if you need it yeah i got the blu-ray copies too like uh a blu-ray copies a friend of mine the one who was supposed to be on here joseph who is now dead to us uh he uh (laughs) he gave those to me wait they sold them right you just had to buy a certain version of the blu-ray yeah well no 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 these are no they they yeah they they burn because the D specialized it's like a edited where they like take the HD but then they remove the added stuff. Yeah, like a group of Star Wars fans went through and ha- and Frankenstein together all the versions. There's a documentary about it on YouTube that's like all the oh, yeah, work yeah. that they did to 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 make these movies back to or to get these movies back to what they were. I mean, and it's kind of. George claims that the original cuts were were destroyed in a fire, and I wouldn't have any. I would or, or not a fire, a basement flood. I wouldn't have any problem with the with the special editions if we could see the originals. But he has gone so far out of his way to make sure nobody sees those original cuts. Doesn't isn't he literally like the sole owner of the original cuts? I think so. Like that was in Probably. the Disney deal too, because Disney I think wanted to re release the the original unedited versions and that was what part of the dude was like you could have everything else you can't have those yeah so we actually haven't seen the actual original star wars unless you saw it in theaters basically or you have the vhs or the original vhs yeah i think that there is a they did do a dvd release of the original trilogy 
or the unedited versions, but like they're like 130 bucks now. But it was like a it was a crappy laser disc port. Remember laser discs? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think a lot of the yeah the the actual unedited ones that you mm-hmm. get like legit, it's like the bad quality, like the old quality. Yeah, you're only gonna get the VHS tape. So you won't get the HD. Yeah. So yeah, which some people, some purists are fine with, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if if you want to watch it again, you should check out the D Special Ed's. Yeah. I I don't know how to put it, but like I feel like every time a new format is available at home, everyone's always like, "What version of Star Wars we're getting?" <laughs> watch it. Yeah. They're gonna add some some new stuff next time. I I recently bought the Saga uh, box set in 4K. Yeah, Ooh. is that is that the one that has a no, no, as he's throwing pebble, as as if we didn't know that that's what Darth <laughs> Vader was think was thinking. I know, this, right? Uh, this is just George I mean, behind the scenes. They're just like, well, you know, we needed to put that in there so they would know that he wanted to save Luke Skywalker. I I haven't watched the old ones in 4K yet because those are kind of hard to watch in HD. Yeah. Because of all the cut edits, it looks so fake in certain scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, funny enough, it's a weird way. It's a weird thing to say, honestly, that it looks faker somehow. But <laughs> well, that's a big problem. Yeah, yeah I you- haven't had a chance to. Um, I checked out some of the special features. Huh. Oh, there you go. Okay, we're back. But uh, yeah. that's that's one of the problems I have with them restoring and like making these movies like ultra HD, these classic movies like like the old Godzilla movies. When, once you put, they relied on the film quality being kind of yeah. crappy, because now with with their HD, you can see all the strings, you see everything, and, and that like happened- the movement is you know get the same motion blur. Exactly, and then uh, you know, the Raiders of the Lost Ark is a great example. Is that in the snake pit scene, you could see the snake's reflection now on the glass that's separating the actors from the snakes. So, I, <laughs> that HD quality kind of ruins the uh, the movie magic. Yeah, but I mean, it just goes. It goes to show how far technology's come, too, though. True. Yeah, the fact that you can like up the quality on something. Yeah, crazy. and like you can catch those details, like it's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Which right. you know, I feel like there's a certain magic studios haven't figured out yet on how to keep the, I guess, keep the essence of the film there without ruining the imagination. Yeah, you know, like upping the quality but keeping the imagination there in the spirit. Mm-hmm. I feel like they haven't gotten there yet. Mixing it, mixing practical effects with CGI. That's my yeah. That too. I think but that's I, the biggest thing. I think uh, upscaling CG and hiding prosthetics and like all that stuff. I think they could do a better job at editing that. They just are either too lazy or just really don't have the technology or the power or whatever the workforce behind it. Whatever you want to say, mm-hmm. they're just not there yet. Or Maybe I'm wrong, and you know, I don't work in film, so what do I know? <laughs> well, a lot of like times where you, you notice it, it's because it's bad CG or bad editing. Like the True. good ones, you don't even notice. Exactly. Yeah. Like to me, there's a reason Jurassic Park still holds up so well compared to like the CGI and like say Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> well, they used actual prosthetics for almost like every dinosaur in that movie, didn't they? Exactly. Like it, mm-hmm. if it was a close up, it was a real dinosaur animatronic done by Lord, like the god of animatronics, uh, Stan Winston. He did Terminator, Jurassic Park, and, and all those movies. And uh, he did the first Iron Man suit too, I think. Oh, nice. But uh, he, uh, yeah, so the dinosaurs were real when they were up close, and then the far away shots were CG. And that's why they look so good. And I think that, you know, if they did that more in movies nowadays, it'd look a lot better. Because CGI up close, it doesn't look that great. Well, Jurassic Park is a weird thing to compare to because, you know, Star Wars kind of kicked the door open on, like, blockbusters. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, you had some other action movies in in between. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's definitely a plethora of films that came out mm-hmm. post Star Wars that really showcased that blockbuster hit film feel. Mm-hmm. But Jurassic Park was one of those weird fluke movies where everything just works. And instead of kicking the door open, it busted through the frames. Right. You know, like everything about that movie holds up. And, like from the They also scene. used a lot of methods with like how they, I think they modeled it so that like in the rain, it looks a lot better. But like if they you use that model, like, and it wasn't a raining scene. It would have looked like terrible. The one with the T Rex. Yeah. yeah. And like a lot of like methods like that to like really help it look good. Yeah, and you know, I think that uh well uh, look I think M- you can kind of compare that to, to Empire Strikes Back because look at the the Imperial Walkers, the AT ATs, mm-hmm. like those are stop motion and stop motion is kind of considered outdated in terms of special effects today, but they still look amazing because they knew how to the stop motion lends mm-hmm. itself to the robotic movement of those walkers and they didn't it wasn't up close shots or anything they really knew how to how to film it mm-hmm. yeah and funny enough again george had nothing to do with that <laughs> uh yeah you know all the ambitious stuff in star wars wasn't done by him industrial mm-hmm. light and magic those guys were just they were insane yeah yeah and i think this is a perfect example of where he gets praised too much because I think he just planted the seeds, but so many people have like tended to that garden, mm-hmm. you know, like kind of like Steve jobs. Everybody gives him credit for Apple and everything. When it, he was more of an idea man than anything, it was the yeah. engineers. It was Wozniak. <laughs> yeah. Wozniak. Yeah. Shout out but, to Silicon Valley. Exactly. You know, every, that's the funny thing again, when it is at its best, he's praised. And when it's at its worst, he is scolded, like we've been repeating over and over. Mm. All the stuff, like the ATAC is the perfect example. Again, he had nothing to do with that film. And that movie did so much with the lore and just on its execution on like how it portrayed so much, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's ironic that the, the next movie that he had more involvement in was Return of the Jedi, writing the screenplay and everything. And that's considered the lesser of the three films, which it is not... No. I don't. I disagree yeah. with that. Better than New Hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do think it's way better than a New Hope. And yeah, I think people are just scared of critiquing the original. Yeah, people are really afraid of saying anything bad about that movie. But we're gonna say that here, and we're gonna burn that bridge with the rest of the Star Wars community. Movie's boring. Yeah, yeah I watched it on May Fourth, and I was like, "Oh, this is so slow." Yeah, it's not even that good, bro. I mean, Why it sucks. It it's. You know, it was good for its time. Yeah, like, yeah, it's definitely. I was like thirteen, and I went to the theater in nineteen seventy-seven. I would have blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll just say this: whenever I pl- replay Lego Star Wars two, the original trilogy, or any of the Lego Star Wars games, I always skip A New Hope and go straight to Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think I'm at a point in my life where I don't need to watch that movie more than like I don't know. I'll rewatch Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi any day. Yeah, I saw Empire live with the symphony. Really? Yeah, Ooh. front row. You lucky son of a bitch. I mean, it wasn't cheap. I did go a little broke, a little broke for it, but it was awesome at the episode. Worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To have that live playing along the whole movie is pretty incredible. Yeah. You know, just because uh, Ben has Kit Fisto as a uh, as his background, I I just was thinking. I was so mad that Kid Fisto went down like a bitch in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, everyone just kind oh, of just got like about... slaughtered. Got that it was weird like stab. Order 66 <laughs> and all Jedi lost powers in that process. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Uh... Well, have so you guys cool. seen the animated series? No, I've stayed away from all Clone Wars stuff overall. I try- okay, I tried watching it a few times. Couldn't get past animation. And then recently I tried again and it's actually not too bad. No, I heard it's really good. Yeah. I just, yeah. I've been waiting for the right time to binge it all at once, and I just haven't because I'm a lazy yeah. adult. Well, they just finished, so uh, that's yeah. why I like started watching it again. I'll like, probably, I'll probably start binging it, and uh, I, uh, I, what was the other one? I was, gonna... oh yeah, um, the Clone Wars, the the original animated one, the two D animated one. Yeah, that's made by the mm-hmm. studio that made like Samurai Jack and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To me, that is cool. that's how the prequel should have been. 
yeah like those are so good like but, you know, they just nerfed general grievous so hard in revenge of the sith compared to general grievous in that cartoon he's just slaughtering jedi left and right and then he's just kind of this big dumb guy and uh revenge it of the sith shows how strong mace windu was when he choked him yeah and then like, somehow like mace everyone windu else forgot that they can use the force on him yeah and then Mace Windu is just kind of isn't that strong in the movies. Yeah, that is such a badass part though. The Mace Windu just skips the lightsaber and he just like crushes his his like lungs. Mm. Uh, but, but yeah, um, yeah. Give the animated series a shot. It's 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 not bad. Okay, I have to I have to watch. I plan it on it. Mm. Same thing with Rebels. Yeah, it's in my queue. I'm trying to finish up uh, Star Trek The Next Generation right now. Oh, yeah. I'm a past dog. <laughs> yeah, you're not a Star Trek fan? I'm not going I, you know, I love not going that whole. but I can't do Star Trek. I you can't like do Star Trek. Huh? What about you, Ben? I I like reading about it, but I, I just can't sit down and watch the show. It's wow. too slow for me. Well then, okay. Well, I like the J.J. Abrams movies. That's because those movies. That's because those movies have been dumbed down for the masses. Hey, they should have him do Star Wars or something. Uh, <laughs> have J.J. Abrams do Star Trek or do Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You know. That was um, an interesting meeting board back in like 2013. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. The I I am a kind of a Trekkie though. I I do like Star Trek. Um, I don't hate it. I just, uh, I don't know. I think it kind of has that feeling. It's like that feeling of a new hope, but a whole series. Wait, have you watched Wrath of Khan? <laughs> Either of you? I've never seen any of the movies. Oh, watch Wrath of Khan. You'd, you'd like Wrath of Khan. That's like the best Star Trek movie. Well, I mean, I've seen the, the Benedict Cumberbatch Khan. <laughs> that, does not, that does not count. You need to watch the original <laughs> Wrath of Khan with uh, Ricardo Montalban. They whitewashed uh, Khan. He's supposed to be an angry macho Hispanic man, not a okay. I love Benedict Cumberbatch as Khan. Like that's why I want him to play Thrawn. I think he'd be an amazing Thrawn. He could be an amazing Thrawn. I could see it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't. Know, is there uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, it's hard to say because you know it. I guess I want to say I feel bad in a way, not financially because the man's rich, but I think yeah. I feel bad for George. Like his 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 baby got like ripped away from him. Yeah, and I think I feel bad for what what's become of his property because they got monetized to the ground. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean that was well before Disney, but I think also just how much people really hate that man. Yeah, you know, say what like, you will he set out to have a dream and he achieved it and I don't blame him for any choice. He brought he this like whole world to us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame him for a single choice he made, honestly, because mm -hmm. I get it. You know, that's, that's how the business is. Sometimes you just got to go for the money, you know? Yeah. And I think people need to calm down and realize the prequel trilogy is actually not good as a film. It's fun as star Wars. I enjoy them to just watch for the memes and you know, they have their moments like you were saying earlier. General Kenobi. <laughs> I just well, like it for like the, yeah, you don't look at it for like a good film. It's like, you just, the like Star Wars, the good moments, the good yeah. moments. Yeah. That's what like I guess It just like brings you into like a different world. Yeah. I can, I can agree with that. And I think <laughs> yeah. people, don't people like realize they're the number one enemy. Like, you know, Rise of Skywalker comes out and they're like, oh, Jar Jar Abrams or like, you know, George wouldn't have done this or see because of what George did in the prequels and the original trilogy, they had to do certain things with these movies to, you know, have some consistency. And I think people just need to stop complaining. I know that's not going to change anything. Yeah. Like if you don't like it, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Just don't like, you don't have to like constantly complain about it. You want to hear a story about how evil star Wars fans are. There is a recently a video, an interview uploaded on YouTube with the actor who played Jar Jar Binks and Binks, and he almost committed suicide after Phantom Menace because like the reception, like fans were just so cruel to this guy. Yeah, and like it's not his fault, yeah. you know. He's just it trying isn't. to get a, like, 
I think yeah, Star Wars fans just need to calm down a little bit. I think more than a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, why, that's why I don't go on Facebook or anything like that anymore because like the people are the people the comments Star Wars fans leave on anything Star Wars related, especially post Last Jedi, is so toxic. You can't enjoy anything anymore. Yeah. You just uh, need to just enjoy what you enjoy and not focus on like what you don't like about it. Yeah. True. And I think people need to stop praising George as this like all entity perfect filmmaker for the original mm-hmm. trilogy when really, you know, I'm going to say it. He gets too much credit. That's where I stand. Okay. <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. You know, I think it's about time we. It's the same thing that Marvel does with uh, Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and all these other creators that don't get enough credit compared to Stan Lee. Um, you know, this. Wait, Stan Lee didn't draw everything? <laughs> I know. Jesus, those people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's. Um, we. Uh, we don't give enough credit to those the the editors, the writers, and the other directors who really made the the people who made the original trilogy that great. And not saying that George doesn't deserve, uh, you know, a, lo- a lot of credit, but I, I mean, his original ver- visions of Star Wars before people kind of like helped him along with it were completely mm-hmm. different, and it makes you think about what could have been. Um, and we could have well, the the special editions, you know. I think those kind of speak for themselves. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nostalgia, and it's mm-hmm. definitely you know. I think nostalgia factors into it. Yeah, people also are lazy and don't want to do the research. You know, it's not that hard to just look at the credits to Star Wars. They see George Lucas, and then they turn it off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh. It's sad, but yeah, you know, I think that uh, I don't know. I'm out of stuff to say. <laughs> I think we yeah. said it. I think we said think, everything. So I think yeah, he he does he does get too much credit. Yeah, I mean, so. that's just how it is. You know, there's always someone mm-hmm. standing on top. True. And again, use the MCU as an example. Stan Lee got too much credit because he was the only one alive at this point. Yeah, it's it's just whoever becomes the face of it. Yeah, true. Everything associated with that is just associated with this person. Although I will interject that I do think that Steve Ditko kind of did it to himself. Well, true. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's a that's a topic for another completely different video. But anyways, you guys down to review the the prequels in a couple weeks or whichever? Yeah, I'm totally sure. down. Okay, we'll review the prequels, the sequel trilogy, and uh, the original trilogy. So uh, we'll do that some other time and. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, anything else you guys want to say? I think it's we could start wrapping things up if you want. Um, uh, Danny finished the Mandalorian. What the heck? I know, I know. I uh, stopped after a couple episodes. It's not because I didn't like it. It's because I can't focus on anything ever. Well, just so you know, the original Mandalorian is going to be the original Mandalorian. And- <laughs> Ready for that. Yeah. Are, you guys, are you guys ready for for Boba Fett to come back? I'm ready for that. I'm ready for the guy that played uh, <laughs> Jango Fett to be Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, he's coming back to play to play him. Yeah, that's good. that's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I think as far as uh, I think it's safe to say Mandalorian is the best piece of Star Wars we've got in a long time. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, even though I've, I haven't finished the series, but yeah. Well, it's, you guys aren't excited for that lady who's writing the uh, the female centric Star Wars movies. I'll watch the, whatever comes out, man, and wait for yeah, it. If it's Star Wars, I'll watch it. The, the, Star, yeah. the lady who was uh, Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant. Oh, man. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think that's Kathleen Kennedy's one last FU since everybody hates her. We'll see. I mean, for all we know, you just can't tell these days, you know? Yeah. Just keep identity I mean, politics out of Star Wars. Yeah. If, like, you just can't figure out how things are going to end up. If you would have told me back when it came out that the guy that wrote and directed The Hangover was going to make The Joker, I would have laughed. <laughs> That's a good point. 
you know, if you would have told me the guy from 10 Things I Hate About You was going to be the Joker in the Dark Knight, well, this is all Joker stuff. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, uh, here's, a, here's one that I, I love to – if I could go back and tell my uh, younger self that uh, there's going to be a summer where a Batman versus Superman movie comes out and a Captain America movie, and the Captain America one is going to be, <laughs> good, is gonna be oh, the good dude. one. I, I wouldn't like have believed you. My my younger self would have been so angry because I was not a Cap fan when I was a kid. Nobody was. Nobody liked Captain America or uh, or Iron Man or any of these characters for the MCU. I thought Iron Man was cool. Let me be honest. Yeah. I was actually a Green Lantern fan back in those days. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I always like Green Lantern. That's because of the cartoon. Um, yeah. There's a there's a meme I saw before. We'll wrap this up right after this. There's a funny meme that I saw, and it was uh, do you know that scene in the first Iron Man movie where Jeff Bridges screams at that guy? And he's just like Tony Stark made this in a cave. Oh yeah, bunch yeah. of scraps. There was a there was somebody did like a comic of it, or it was a YouTube comment I think, and it was a uh, the guy goes, um, it says WB uh, movie executive Zack Snyder, we need you to make the DC cinematic universe, and he's just like. I can't do that. And they're just like, Kevin Feige made the D- the MCU with a bunch of B-list characters. I can't do that. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you're going to say Ant-Man is going to be a big... I know that one, yeah. The fact that they were... Just, the, fact that like they pulled, the fact that they pulled off some of these characters, I'm just like, I take my hat off to you. Yeah, so, I mean, it's like if you told me as a kid that there would have been a bad Star Wars movie. Oh Jesus! Yeah, three, three. Okay, before we go, let's just say, what's your top three? Top three Star Wars movies. Yeah, top three. Empire is first, I think, for a lot of people. Number one for Ben, Empire. Mine, mine's gonna have to be Empire too. We are is this like all stuff you would rewatch? Just everything, just like out of all the all nine films. Oh, sure, all eleven films. Throw the Christmas special in all twelve. Every <laughs> single anything Star Wars like that can be considered a Star Wars movie. Yeah, anything. Realistically, it's only twelve movies. I can tell you right now. I'll start it off. Oh yeah, you do it. Empire. Last Jedi. Yep. And you ready for this one, Dan? You're going to hate it. I'm going to say it, though. I'm say Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go throw up in the corner real quick. Yeah, that, okay. I, have, uh, I don't know. It's it's hard picking the, the last two. I, I would say, okay, I'd go Empire, um, Jedi, and then Return of the Jedi. Make, make that very clear. And then I'd probably actually say the original uh, 2D animated Clone Wars movie. Oh, yeah, that's right. And there's would... also the CG Clone Wars as well. Oh, oh that, yeah. That, that movie's awful, though. That movie's... Okay. Okay, good choice. Good okay, choice. Empire, Jedi. I'm going to say, for the nostalgia, Clone Wars. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I think... <laughs> wait, wait, Attack of the Clones or like Clone Wars... Oh, sorry. Attack of the Clones. Attack Ooh. of the Clones. Oh yeah. my God, Ben! Ooh. Ding, ding, ding! Triggered. <laughs> ben, you are dead to me. Are you okay? Why clone? Okay, I'm turning into a Star Wars fanboy right now. But why clone Attack of the Clones? It's the... I don't know. I just love it. If you said, you it I love kid. it. If you said Phantom Menace, I'd be like, all right, yeah, you know, Darth Maul. That hey, when at- when those clones drop down into that arena. You can't say that's not a good scene. Uh, yo, that is a good thing. That that is a good scene. The problem is that's like one of three good scenes in a, in like a two and a half hour movie. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes now, it feel better. Last Jedi is the longest one, so. Yeah, I mean, I get it though. Like, I I get I can I can get that. There are some fun scenes in Attack of the Clones, and I think Last Jedi is a beautiful a bu- beautifully shot movie, and it has some really good scenes in it. Yeah, I, you know. I get my I like my stories to be very basic and vanilla when it comes to my major superheroes. 
But when it comes to other things, I'm a fan of, I like when you change things up and you really shake the ground and go for it. And I respect Ryan Johnson for taking the biggest property in film history and just saying, you know what, I'm going to do this because we are due for something different. True. Yeah. And I respect that. And he knew to respect the fans even more than George Lucas did by having a Yoda doll still instead of a CG Yoda. That's true. But I think that Last Jedi to me comes down to execution. And that's, I think, really where I think movies these days, Last Jedi is a movie to me that could have been saved if you had somebody else. I'm sure they had somebody else, but like a couple more rewrites could have saved that movie to me. There's a few things. I think it was going in the right direction. Yeah, I do too. More so than the other two. Cantabite was useless, but it was still fun. Um, It was Rose was awful. Uh, but I think, I think, yeah, he shouldn't have killed Luke. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. I feel like he could have killed him at the very end and then end on a cliffhanger, not knowing if he would come back or not. I think Uh, that would have worked more, but you know, it happened, it came out and I I love that movie personally. So, well, to each your own, I guess. See guys, we're we're all we have different differentiating uh, opinions, and we we can all still get along. So, Danny's you know. screaming on the inside, but yes, <laughs> uh, I am seething with rage right now. But you yeah, know, that, that's okay. That's it. See, we single handedly just fixed America right now. With <laughs> People can't have opinions and talk. <laughs> no, it's not allowed. We don't do that anymore. But uh, yeah, I. On that note, I think that uh, we should wrap things up if you guys are cool with that. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. So uh, we'll be back um, to review the prequels and the OG trilogy, other things Star Wars uh, in the near future, hopefully. I mean, it doesn't seem like that the apocalypse is going to be ending anytime soon. So, um, you know, uh, what did, would you say, Ben, about the quarantine? It's like you're you're training for this your whole life or yeah i'm ready oh, same yeah. here dude <laughs> Me too. i've completed six video games <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh god damn it i really regret leaving my copy of the og battlefront 2 at at home because <laughs> yeah, i had modded the shit out of that game on my on my pc so oh, nice. yeah. but anyways guys though yeah we will be back soon so go ahead and uh, like and subscribe uh if you like what you see and you can follow us uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All the links are in my profile. Anywhere you where you guys want to be, uh, want to post where you, anybody can follow you or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm uh, I'm here to help you, Danny. So you know, everybody can follow my other podcasts that I'm helping out with as well. Because we're, we got you on there, <laughs> which is Apollo City Comics. I will put a link to that in the, in the description yes. below. Which, uh, disclaimer, is not mine. I'm just guest featured on that one, but we got to help each other out. Exactly. We, we all got to stick together as Star Wars fans. Exactly. Uh, what about you, Ben? Nope. Gotcha. <laughs> Great. So, do you want me to blur your name out, too? On the... oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Uh, it was great talking to you, and uh, we will be back with uh, more Star Wars-related garbage in the future. So, take care, guys. <laughs>